Christians, we have a hope. Yes, Thank you, Lord. We have a hope. And I'm thankful that we do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's read today. I want to minister for just a few minutes. I know that we had a good manna session. And I'm thankful for that. But I just have something that I'd like to share with you this morning. And I want to read Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. I'm going to start there. Very familiar passage of Scripture. In fact, something that, that should give us comfort. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Of course, this is Jesus speaking. He said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For just a few minutes today, I want to minister, and this is the title of this little message, Jesus has the rest you need. Jesus has the rest you need. Praise the Lord. Someone say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you as you're seated. Thank you, Lord. It is good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here today who's just tired? Yeah. I don't mean, is there anybody here that wants to go to bed right now? Some say, yeah, to that too. Just don't, please don't sleep during my sermon. It's going to be short today. But I mean, are you just tired? Are you weary? Now, I have a habit that many times when I'm ordering something, say, at a fast food restaurant or place, I, I will usually read the name tag of the person who's taken my order, and I will call them by name, and I will say, Sue, how are you doing today? And you would not believe the number of times that the answer comes back, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. It's amazing that with all of the modern things that we have available to us today, Americans are still tired. We're just tired. I used the power of the internet and I looked for some things that are available to us that are supposed to make our life easier and make our life less tired. I found a little gadget that's called a whisk wiper. Does anyone know, remember what a whisk is? Have you used a whisk? <laughs> but this is a whisk wiper and it is a little gadget that is used to clean your whisk so that you don't have to take the time to clean each of the tines of your whisk by hand. The whisk wiper is supposed to be a time saver. And then I found a little something called a pizza spatula. Now this one is actually pretty neat. It looks like you stick the spatula part under the, piece, the slice of pizza that you want and then you use the attached scissors and you do a perfect cut of the line of pizza that you want, and voila, you have a slice of pizza using less energy <laughs> than you would have if you had sliced the pizza with a pizza cutter and then stuck your hand under there <laughs> and grabbed your slice of pizza. The pizza spatula, what an energy saver. And then, now this one might blow your mind. If you didn't think the, if the pizza spatula didn't, this might blow your mind. And then I found a remote control mop. A remote control mop. That's right. With your remote control mop, you can mop the floor all around with your handheld controller. What an energy saver. Now you can sit on your couch and eat your chips and dip and you move that mop all around on your floor like you are playing a video game. The remote control mop is, is a real thing. In fact, you can buy it on Amazon right now for $69.02. We have gadgets like these that are supposed to make our life easier, that are supposed to make our life less tired, to make us left weary, and yet we are still just tired. How are you today? I'm just tired. 
How about our modern technology? Surely our modern technology makes us less tired, less weary, right? Just think how much easier email has made your life. No longer do you actually have to find a piece of paper and get a pen and literally, God forbid, write out your letter, find an envelope, Find a stamp, address the envelope, take the envelope to the mailbox, raise the flag, and then wait for the mailman to come. How much easier has email made our lives? While I was putting this message together, I looked at my email account, and I have 4,557 unread emails. 4,557 emails from someone that I do not know and do not want to hear from, but they expect me to open and take the time to read their message to me. 4,557, and that doesn't include the ones that I actually open and read. If I received one letter, I put this together, I'm a math guy, so I thought, I wonder how this would work in a, in a real piece of mail. If I received one letter per day, Monday through Saturday, in my U.S. Postal Service mailbox at my home, then it would take over 14 and a half years to get 4,557 letters. That's a long time. Email has made our life so much easier that we are tired just thinking about all the email we get. Someone say amen right there. Amen. And just think about how much less stressful our lives would be without all the video games that are out there. <laughs> no one here ever gets stressed out over a video game, do you? No one here has ever stayed up to the wee hours of the morning playing a video game, have you? We have gadgets. We have modern technology. We have so many things that are invented to make the tiredness and the weariness and the heavy burdens that life brings us easier. And yet, how are you today? I'm just tired. I'm just tired. The fact that we get tired in our body is something that is a natural result of our daily activities. When we work hard, we feel it in our bodies and we get tired. That type of tired can be helped with rest and relaxation. That type of tired can be helped by going home and actually going to bed rather than staying up all night playing video games or watching television or working on your smartphone by the court. <laughs> when Matthew recorded the words of Jesus, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls I believe that Jesus was speaking about a weariness that goes past the physical. It's one thing to be tired. It's one thing to be weary in your natural body. But it's another thing altogether to be tired, to be weary, to be heavy laden in your spirit. Weariness and tiredness in the natural body can be cured with natural rest, but tiredness and weariness and heavy ladens that are brought on by mental labor in our spirit cannot really be eased by bed rest. The only, I'm glad, I know too, brother. That's right, thank you. He said, I know, I do too. Thank God. The only way to find rest for a weary, heavy laden soul is to plug into, is to connect in a real way with the Lord. All right. Amen. We may not realize it, but there is a scale that most people 
in most people's lives that they are constantly weighing their behavior on to see if they're good enough. Good enough for God. Good enough for their spouse. Good enough for their children. Good enough for their parents. Good enough for their bosses. Maybe we don't say it out loud, but in our minds and in our spirits, we are always weighing our behaviors. And while we're doing that, Jesus is saying, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And it seems like there are times when we are constantly asking ourselves, do I pray enough? Do I read my Bible enough? Do I earn enough money? Do I spend enough time with my kids? Do I spend enough time with my spouse and still have the time I need for myself? And Jesus is saying, come to me. All you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. If you can see yourself in anything I've said thus far today, then Jesus is here and he's telling you the same thing that he was telling people 2,000 years ago. Jesus is saying, I'm here to help. I'm here to ease your burden." Jesus promises us rest, but the rest that we are promised by the Lord doesn't mean that the burdens will go away. Let me let that sink in for just a second. The rest that we are promised by the Lord does not mean that our burdens will disappear from our lives. While we are in this life, there will always be family commitments. There will always be work commitments. There will always be church and community commitments. The rest that we can receive from the Lord will give us a chance to breathe. It will be like a drink of cold water. Anybody experience that? You've just been hot. You've been out working. And you just, you don't want a soda. You don't want coffee. You want a drink of cold water. That's the type of rest that we can receive from the Lord. Jesus didn't promise that we would never be weary ever again, but instead he is offering us a chance at renewal and refreshment while we're on this journey. Amen. 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 It may seem odd that right after Jesus said that he will give us rest, the next thing he said was take his yoke on us. Now, the word yoke in Jesus' day referred to the same thing that it refers to today. It refers to a piece of equipment that is mostly used in agricultural work. In Jesus' day, yokes were made out of wood just as they are today. And the very best yokes, we don't think about things in the old days, in Jesus' day, them them being able to to be a craftsman enough to make a a good yoke. But the very best yokes were custom made. They were made for the individual animals or the teams of animals and they were adjusted so that it wouldn't hurt the animal and it would spread the load to make the work, to make the effort more efficient. They were shaped just right, to fit just right. And that is a fact that when a yoke fit an animal well, then it was called an easy fit. Do you ever think about what Jesus did for a living? You say, well, that's easy, Pastor. He was a carpenter. And as a carpenter, we think of him making chairs and tables and crafting doors or maybe even building homes, building homes that they had then. But hear me now, but a big job for a carpenter 2,000 years ago was building farm equipment, making tools and shaping yokes. I wonder if there was a carpenter shop in Nazareth that had this sign on it. Jesus' carpenter shop. My yokes are easy. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The invitation and the promise are clear. Jesus is saying, come to me. I have grace, and I have mercy, and I have forgiveness that is here for you if you'll just come for me. And after you come for me, then, if you want real rest, 
then you want to then you need to connect with me in a real way. Jesus is saying that when we are connected to him like a yoke that connects two oxen together to accomplish one goal, he said that when we get really connected with him, we will find that that connection is just right. That it's just right. Praise God. And then even though the pressures of life are still there, even though family commitment and work commitment and community and church commitments are still there, we will find peace and we will find refreshing and we will find rest. Because He is with us, helping us every step of the way. Jesus has the rest you need. Someone who knows what I'm saying is true. Say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand with me right now, if you will. Praise God. Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2. Now, this is the Christian Standard Bible. David writes, For I am at rest in God alone. He gets that I. He said, I am at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. He said, I will never, hallelujah. He said, I will never be shaken. What I've brought you this morning is not something that's new. Everyone, every day, fights heaviness. We fight weariness in our spirits and in our souls. But what I'm trying to show you today is that the peace, the rest of Jesus is more than the absence of heaviness and conflict. The rest of Jesus comes by being joined together with Him. You can search for rest in yourself or in others, but you may find disappointment. You can search for rest in a bottle or in a pill, but the high will eventually go away. And you're going to find yourself crashing harder and harder every time. We can search for rest in the things of this world, but real rest can only be found in a personal relationship, in a personal connection with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus has the rest you need. Praise God. Praise God. If you're in this house today and you just need rest, you can find it in Jesus. I just feel like right now I'm going to open this altar. And as Sister Wendy sings whatever song she has chosen, I... I want you to come and if you feel like you need to pour things out to the Lord, why don't you do it today? We're not going to bother you. We're going to let you have the time that you need just to talk to the Lord. Pour your heart out to Him and pour out to Him the things that you need Him to know. He knows them already, but if you want a real connection with the Lord that needs to be a connection when you can, where you can talk to Him like a friend, we don't need to talk to the Lord and all these and thou's, O oh, thy mighty God. We just need to talk to Him like a friend. Talk to Him like someone that is with us through everything because He is. So today I want to open this altar and I want to invite anyone who'd like to come and just spend a few minutes talking to Him and finding rest in Him. Let's come together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.